Hello, I'm Jamie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing another Horrible Histories video because you all loved the one I did where I ranked the songs and I got requests to do more and a specific request to look at series 6 and to series 9 which is the Horrible History series with the new cast and the new format and one that I had previously not fully watched before because I didn't like it when I first started watching it. I was very disappointed that the original cast had left and yeah also before we get into the video apologies if I sound a bit off a bit rough uh, I'm currently battling a cold so <laughs> yeah we'll see how this video goes I just really wanted to do it so yeah we're just gonna do it anyway but yeah that's why my voice sounds odd so let's just get into the background a bit quickly so in 2013 the original Holbrook histories ended I'm so sad and the main six cast uh, announced that they would not be returning to Holbrook histories as they were working on Yonderland which you know I'm very happy about that <laughs> Um, and then in 2015, it was announced that they would be reviving Holbrook Histories with a new cast and a new format. And yeah, so I was about 15, yeah, I was about 15, 16 when the new series came out. And I still watch Holbrook Histories nowadays. I'm not ashamed to say it. I still watch Holbrook Histories. So as when I was 16, I watched the first few episodes and I was not impressed. <laughs> I did not like it. I did not like that my precious main six characters were not in it. And in fact, there was barely any of the original cast, like even including like Katie Wicks or Alice Lowe, none of them were really in it. And yeah, I just didn't like it. And I just stopped watching it, which is a shame because Horrible Histories was and still is one of my favorite shows, especially as a child. So I'm just gonna go into the changes that they made uh, because there was quite a lot especially in series six. So series six, each episode focused on just one person or one event, which I don't think was a very good idea. Um, as a special episode, I think it works great, but if every episode in a series is just based on one character, one person, I just don't think it works. So a couple of examples, uh, we had like a William the Conqueror episode, an Alfred the Great, Horrid Henry VIII, and yeah, so I get the premise and I think having a special to do with one person who has accomplished like so much, there's so much history in that one person, I think that works. But in each episode, you're not really going to be exploring as much history as you are if you're going to be like not limiting yourself to just one person an episode. Because that one person is only going to have like a hundred years of history if you're including like their family or their children as well. Like you're not going to have that much to deal with and you're also going to be limiting your scope to just like one country and or like one or two depending. Like it just for me it was just very limiting, it didn't work and obviously you had one main actor throughout the episode because there was the one character and for example we had Rowan Atkinson uh, being, uh, being Henry VIII and uh, to me he just like I love him I think he's a great actor great comedian but he doesn't compare to, <laughs> to Ben Wilbon's um, Henry VIII at all it just it was just not as good to me I think I think Ben did such a better job <laughs> um, but that might be because I'm used to him as Henry VIII more and um, we also had Jim um, come into the episode as well he, he he was somebody I can't remember who he played but he was in one episode and I think Simon uh was in a couple of episodes as as, as death yeah it just for me it didn't work and one very annoying little thing <laughs> that they changed is they changed the theme tune which I was not a fan of uh I just didn't like it and they also uh with the end tune the end credits instead of playing the song they played just like outtakes which I do love outtakes, but I just it just wasn't to me. Like, a whole history's episode has to end with the song, and it just felt odd that it wasn't ending with the song. And yeah, I just didn't like that. Um, however, there were they did make further changes from series six to series seven and on to nine, which is the series that's currently airing, and they changed it so they stuck with each episode being more specific than just, you know, there wasn't really any theme in any of the episodes unless it was a special in the original ones. Uh, but in this one, each episode was based on a specific theme. This theme is something that's broad that can cover a whole range of historical eras and countries and people. And it also, but it was also quite specific. So you had exceptional explorers, ruthless rulers, terrible Tudors. And then you also had things like that are a bit more abstract uh, there was like Mind Your Manners and Fashion Faux Pas and then 
again, even going in, in a different way specifically, you had one about the human body and about science. And I think, I think that works very, very well. I think it's unique in the way that it separates itself from the original horrible histories that you're going in, in, into an episode knowing you're going to learn about one specific topic. I think that is a great idea. Um, but it also widens the episode. So you can look at, so ruthless rulers, you can look at Romans, you can look at uh, r- rulers from like the last 20 years. It's it's very broad. You can go to multiple different countries and look at history in all those type of places. And I think that works very, very well. Double Tudors is a bit more kind of limited, but I think it links to, you know, the original books. That was what the original book about Tudors was called. And I think that is... Yeah, I just think it works m- much better. Um, yeah, so I'm a big fan of that change. And there were, were a lot of things that they kept the same as well. So they kept the parody song in each episode, which I think was a great choice to do. I think they knew how successful the songs were, and I think keeping it in was a great idea. Um, and they still have, like, the Savage Songs episodes as well. Um, the songs are still parodies, so I think the parodies are quite good. I think... In some ways, they're even more, like, directly parodying songs than the original did. And, yeah, I I am a fan of some of them. I think some of them are very inventive, they're educational, they're funny. Um, I don't think they're as, like, iconic as the original ones. But, again, that might just be because I have watched the other series a lot more and I am a much bigger fan. But I think the original ones just have something different to it, just something unique that just can't be beaten. And I just, I, yeah, I just can't really explain it that well. I think the um, the actors that sing in the songs, I think they're all generally pretty good singers, but they just they just bring a completely different energy that the original six bring to the to the songs, um, which yeah, I think as I said, they're good, but it's just not not quite the same. Uh, linking linking to this, their sketches I think are also pretty good. I think again they were more directly parodying specific TV shows, which the like obviously the original did with like historical MasterChef and you know that kind of thing. But I, yeah, I, I was a fan of a lot of the sketches that they did and a lot of the parodies. My favourite, I think, was the like historical educating series uh, sketches. Um, it's obviously based on like educating Yorkshire, and this I think is good because it's directly parodying a TV show, but it's also linking and kind of like expanding what they did originally, which they had like the. A historical teacher coming into a school and I think yeah just that the <laughs> being as it is being like a parody of a reality show I think works very very well and Lolly Adafopi actually appeared in some of these sketches she was playing like a head teacher and she was fantastic in it she was very very good I think and also if you're a fan of ghosts then that's another <laughs> um, character in ghosts that was in Hogwarts history so I'm a big fan of that and yeah Lolly Adafopi was absolutely incredible I wish she was in it more and on that topic they did have some excellent actors and comedians involved you know I mentioned Rowan Atkinson as a guest actor um, but they also had Gemma Whelan I think that's how you pronounce her name uh, she was in Game of Thrones and Upstart Crow and I think she's a fantastic actress to choose for Hogwarts histories particularly like Game of Thrones she was incredible in that and also Upstart Crow she um, that's historical and involves her playing an historical character and also a comedic historical character as it is a comedy show and I think yeah I think she's fantastic in it and also um Ellie White who plays Catty in Staff Let's Flat she was in a few episodes as well uh we also had some of the original members return as I said for a few episodes so like Simon and Jim appeared and also Larry Lewin who was in a lot of the original six episodes and yeah I'm very happy to see him come back same with Dominique Moore uh, those two, I think, were great underrated characters in the uh, underrated actors in the first few series. Yeah, they also featured a lot of guest actors, particularly in the series six. So the um, the main character that they'd be exploring would generally be played by a guest actor. So we had like Ben Miller, Rowan Atkinson, uh, Tom Rosenthal, uh, Dara Brian uh, appeared in the space episode, which I think is great, linking a scientist to talk about like linking like science and history directly together. And we also had Fred from First Dates. He appeared in like a First Dates sketch a couple of times. Chris and Zand, like the doctors from CBC, who are now obviously not just from CBC, but like, you know, um, they did like the Operation Ouch. They appeared in like the um, episode about the human body. And I think that's a really good way of linking the real world, like real life (laughs) people currently working in that field to the historic, historical kind of development of their field. And I think that's very, very good. So let's get into what I liked about series six to series nine. So first of all, I think it is very educational. And I think it has a good mix between being educational and also being entertaining. 
I feel like it also focuses on more countries and more eras than the original did, um, spe specifically the countries. I also think that it focuses more on countries that the original didn't. I think it looks at a wider range of history, maybe because the original had already covered quite a bit, but I feel like it's, there are barely any like repeats. Um, if, if there is a repeat of like a historical event, it's always kind of like in a different way, um, which I think is very, very good. As I said, I think the themed episodes work very well. I think it's particularly the moon episode, which surprised me quite a bit. I was expecting it to be very limited and just focusing on like the moon landings, but it covered a wide range of people, eras and events. And yeah, I genuinely felt like I learned something new, which I think was very, very good. And I think again, bringing Dara Brian in, uh, talk a bit about like the science behind it all, I think was fantastic, a great choice. And yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that episode and there's loads of episodes where I felt the same as well. I think it does a great job of linking the eras together as well. Particularly we'll talk about like the, the protest episode. Um, so there's an episode about um, protesting and I think it had Emmeline Pankhurst as like the main figure, like narrating it and you know, she came back and forth in between it as well, but they also talked about Rosa Parks, uh, Harriet Tubman, they talked about Romans um, like protesting who were considered like the first ever people to protest and all the different methods of protesting and the way it kind of linked together and showed like the various extremes, I think was very, very good. and. It felt fluid even though it was going like swapping between loads of different eras and I think that was very very well done. The sketches I think generally were very very good, specifically the ones that were directly parodying TV shows. So as I said I really liked the Educating Yorkshire, I also liked the First Dates episodes and the Love Island ones, not sure how appropriate they are for children, um, like how aware they'd be of those shows. Um, but I guess it fits into the idea that the original had of wanting to be appealing to both children and adults. So yeah, I think it does work very well. And yeah, and as I said before, I think the songs are good, the singing's good. And yeah, again, perhaps not as iconic as the original songs, but still very, very good. I think they, they do a good job of like choosing the songs to link to the, the events. So again, with the protest episode, there was a song about the women who protested. So we had like, again, like I said, uh, Emmeline Pankhurst, like on this, and the suffragettes, Harriet Tubman, uh, Rosa Parks, and some other ones that I hadn't really heard of. And also linking again to Greta Thunberg as well. She, um, they showed like a newspaper about her. And yeah, the song they chose for that was Run the World Girls by Beyonce. So I think it was a very, very good choice of a song. It linked well. The, it had the like girl power element to it, but also being very educational about how much these women sacrificed and how much great work they did uh, to, you know, to change history. So yeah, I think it was a great song. And they've done that quite a lot of times where they do directly link the song, the theme in the original song to the historical events and people. And yeah, as I said before, the cast is fantastic. Um, not as good as the original cast. However, I will say that Gemma and um, another actress called uh, Jessica Ransom, who is one of the like main actors in it, uh, they do particularly stand out to me. I think both of them are fantastic. I think they've both got great singing voices. I think they're both funny and have a unique acting style. And yeah, they definitely stand out a lot to me. I think those two are the strongest. And one of the biggest things that I like about the new series is I think they focus on history that we're not really taught about that much and history that is relevant to current day situations. So they did an episode about Black History Month and they've also done, as I said, an episode about protesting when the, like after all the big protests in America and the UK occurred. And they talked about how important protesting is, which I think is very important for children to know about, especially in the UK, if you're not aware that our laws and bills attempting to be passed that would severely limit our right to protest, which is just, it would be catastrophic, particularly how like Britain is built on protesting. So yeah, that's just <laughs> not a topic I know that much about, but I do know that it's not very good. So I think teaching children about protesting and how important it is and how protest can, how, how protesting takes completely different forms is very important. Good. And again, Black History Month, I think is something that we're not really taught much about black history in schools, particularly primary schools. So I think it is very good that we've got a show educating children on that issue. And yeah, and also they talked about a lot, they've done an episode about the planet and the environment, which again, very, very important topic to be teaching children about, particularly because, you know, let's be realistic, they're the ones that are gonna have to come up with ideas to save the planet if our generation fails 
that in that course as well. I think it's very good and I think they are setting setting themselves up to do, talk about a lot of important topics. I think that they have the potential to really, really educate children on things that we're not taught about in schools. I think I think it'd be very, very good if they do a similar thing to the Black History Month but about like um, Asian people in Britain particularly and because they're often very underrepresented in like, UK television. Um, so I think that'd be very, very important. I think they could also do an LGBT plus history episode um, to, to educate children that, you know, LGBT people haven't just <laughs> like come into existence, that they've been around in all areas of history. And I think CBBC is definitely making progress in their representation of LGBT people. I think the Tracy Beaker, so in, in like the dumping ground, I think it was called, one of the social workers was gay, I think. I think she was. And then obviously Cam in the new, new Tracy Beaker. Like she was always written to be gay. I think that's fairly obvious, but in the new like revival, Trace, my mum Tracy Beaker, whatever it's called, like she is actually she get married to a woman, and I think that is I think yeah I think CBC has definitely got the potential to be talking about these things, educating children on these things, and I think that the way that they're running horrible histories at the moment, I think that's a brilliant way of of doing it, and I think it's something that they will do in the future. So what didn't I like about it? Um, so the main thing I didn't like about it was the whole of series six. I think series six was very weak in comparison to series seven, eight and nine. Um, so first of all, they had like a chorus of singers uh, that would sing, kind of like narrate it um, before, like the, as if it began in the middle of the episode and at the end. Personally, I found it very annoying and just frankly, just unnecessary. I think it, it was just so repetitive. Um, thankfully, it didn't last very long because um, they didn't, carry it on into series seven or anything like that but yeah it was just annoying it was just unnecessary and yeah <laughs> I didn't like it <laughs> as I touched on before I'm not a fan of the episodes that just follow one person particularly as a whole series I think there was a severe lack of variety in the individual episodes I think yeah it was very limited and I think Hellboy History is the original one worked because the sketches just were so random like you'd go from looking at the Greeks to looking at pioneers and then you look at I don't know the Tudors it is it the way it worked is very it was constantly entertaining it was constantly engaging and yeah you just had so much variety in an episode and you learned so much about different areas of history in just one episode and I think it yeah I, I think you know obviously the creators of the program knew because they then changed what they were doing and I think series seven to nine just works so much better as I touched on before so the humor I think the humor isn't quite up to par with the original episodes I think it is different for the main six. Sometimes it feels a, a more childish, more rude, but that could just be because I'm watching as an adult for the first time rather than watching as a child. And that might be impacting my view of it. Um, but I think one thing that's definitely clear is that there is a lack of chemistry between the main cast. I think watching horrible histories, even if you don't know the any of the actors, I think the chemistry between, especially the main six and the original, are just it's just so obvious. They are clearly the leads. They... I don't know, I think there's just a very, very clear amount of chemistry. And even between like the main six and the supporting actors like Katie Witt and Alice Lowe and Lowry, uh, Lowry, Lowry connection between them all and chemistry and they just work so well together. But yeah, we don't really get that with the new cast. Because like, apart from the two that I mentioned, Gemma and Jessica, I don't, none of the others really stick out to me. Um, apart from the, the, the actors that we've seen in like the, the original Hobbit histories. But yeah, I, that's just one one thing that I just kind of notice, and I think a lot of people who are fans of the original Hallway Histories will also notice. And they also, I feel like sometimes they do um, use too many special effects and CGI, particularly in Series 6. And I think Hallway Histories works a lot, l lot better with their kind of props and backgrounds looking a bit like homemade <laughs> and like simple props. I think that works. It's very Hallway Histories. They've got a unique style to their to their program and I think that works very well and yeah they just use too much like CGI in the background like green screens and it just took me completely out of it it yeah it just wasn't good I think it should be used sparingly and only be like be used if necessary uh, so I'm glad they did take that out because it just looked fake but in like a completely different way to like the sh like the silly little props that they use um, so yeah, that is something that I, and yeah, I mentioned I didn't like the fact that they changed the title, the title, like, uh, intro song, 
um because they didn't change it like completely like if they'd put in a completely different song or wanted to like completely separate themselves from the original i would understand but it would they just changed like a few of the lines it just completely threw me out of it and i just got annoyed straight away <laughs> um but yeah they did return to the original song uh when they renewed to flight like, series seven and onward overall i think it's good i think if you enjoy Hot Boy Histories, I think you should definitely watch it. it maybe skip series six if you if you don't want to watch that one. But I do think it's good. It fulfills its goal of being entertaining and educational. I feel like you definitely get the same style as the original, albeit with a bit less humour, a bit less chemistry between the main cast. But it's still very good and I've still learned new things when watching it. So I think overall it is a success and I do hope it continues because there, yeah, there's been some great moments in it and yeah thank you i think that's the end of the video i yeah i enjoyed it thank you to the people who recommended it to me because i probably would never have watched the later series um if i had not been certain that people wanted to watch a video on it so yeah i'm very happy about that i yeah i'll probably watch the rest of the episodes i didn't watch because i didn't watch every single episode because there was a lot but i watched made sure i watched a few from each series especially because i had such a negative view of it before when i'd only seen some episodes from series six so yeah that's my overall opinion series seven series nine very good and i would recommend if you want to watch them to get a bit more hobble histories fix thank you very much for watching this video if you enjoyed it then please give it a like it really helps the channel and comment down below what you think of the new horrible histories do you like it do you not why why not i yeah i'm very interested to hear your opinion because i was genuinely surprised by how decent it was so yeah thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye